Hey guys, and welcome to this fifth tutorial in the appetizer series. Um, in this tutorial, we're going to start with the fun part of the tutorial series, okay? So we're done with the um, boring and rather easy modeling side of things, and we start with lighting, okay? So let's just open up the file we were working on in the last episode, and that's what it looks like, okay? And if we render that right now, F12, you can see... Um, that's not really what we're going for, okay? So it, uh, yeah. You can see a lot of things that are wrong, but let's let, let's not even talk about this. Let's just do um, a first setups first, and then let's look at it again. Okay, so first of all, I want to change the lamp type to be a sun lamp, okay? So we're going to set up three lights in total, two fill lights and one key light. And the key light um, is going to be a sun, as I just said. So let's just go to the lamp properties over here. Um, we talked about them in one of the um, first steps in preparation tutorials. Actually, quite a few of them covered lamps uh, and lighting. And if you if you um, uh, if you watch that one, then you should already know what I'm going for here. And uh, yeah, if not, you can watch it whenever you want. I, I think it's about episode uh, around 14 to 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 18 or something. Uh, anyway, so we're going for a sun lamp, okay? And um, for some of those values, I'm just gonna give you a number, okay? In the other file that I already prepared beforehand, I changed it to 1.15, okay? And that is basically something I got through experimenting a little bit. Um, so it's kind of hard to tell you how I found those values. Just just play around with it, and at some point you you know if you have your own projects, okay? So for now, just trust me that 1.15 is okay. It's not a big difference. You could as well render the scene with 1 instead of 1.15, but I just thought, yeah, it, it looks better this way. Okay, then as I said, let's change it to sun. And um, obviously here you don't need to change anything else because um, the color, you can change the color here, okay, to get it something, a slightly warmer color. But I like to do all those color adjustments, those fine color adjustments in the compositor because you have more control even in my opinion. And it's just much faster because you don't have to re-render every time. You can just change something and it's nearly interactive. So that's why we don't bother with those settings too much. Let's just minimize that. And now, let's jump to the shadows for now. Um, we basically leave this as it is, but we want soft shadows, okay? And um, if I can show you one thing here, let me just, give me just a second, I'm just gonna f uh, search for an image. Okay, here I'm back. Um, this is the finished image. And as you can see here, we've got soft shadows. Now, oh, let me just pause that annoying slideshow. Okay, we've, we've got soft shadows and they look pretty pretty cool. Um, as you might know, Blender internal does not support caustics or anything else, so the shadows, they look kind of, well, not quite perfect, but it's it's still quite good. If you compare that to this one, you can see an, a difference. Here you can actually see that it's noisy, okay? And here, because there's a texture, you cannot see that. And the reason I left it noisy, the reason I did not turn up the sample is because the way it is right now, it takes 11 minutes or or a bit more to render, and with um, samples of instead of 5, 10, it takes about 20 minutes, okay? And if you want to go for a final image, that's alright, just turn up the samples, but for now, for your tutorial, I'm just going with 5 samples, okay? Which is quite low, but it does its job. And if we render with the uh, wood texture, then it's not a problem anyway. And by the way, the wood texture is from cgtextures.com, I'm, I'm going to link in um, the image into the tutorial where it's actually used. So, yeah. Let's just change the samples to 5. Let's go with a soft size of 2. Okay, The bigger the soft size, the softer the shadows. Um, 0 would be completely harsh, but if it's completely harsh, then you don't need to turn up the samples anyway. Um, let's stay with adaptive, and the threshold of 0 0.001 is okay as well. Um, we can change, still change that later on, or actually, let's just go with 0.1, because it really doesn't make a big difference, in my opinion. Okay, so now let's just minimize the shadows and let's bring the sky and atmosphere back. And we talked about that before as well. And what it basically does is just a very fast way to set up a sky, okay? And um, in this scene, you won't see that setup anyway, okay? It will not be noticeable in the on the horizon, because we can only see a small portion of the horizon and it's so bright the sky in the end that you don't really notice at all. But it is great for reflections, you can see it in the reflections and therefore it's quite important. So let's just uh, check sky. Let's change the blending mode to mix. 
let's leave the brightness spread and the factor at one each. By the way, if you want to know more about sky and atmosphere, it's also in one of the first steps in preparation um, tutorials quite in depth. Then change the color space to CIE. Change the brightness to 0.2. And leave the rest as it is. I'm just comparing with the other files so I don't get anything wrong. We don't want anything unexpected here. Okay, so that's all right. And now we've set up our sun lamp. Okay, now let's just hit F12. And that's what it looks like. And that's what it looks like right now. I'd like to be have the shadows a bit more to the left, like over here. We need to rotate our lamp to the left, okay? And as you might remember, sun lamps don't care where they are positioned. It's just important to the rotation is mainly the only important thing. But still, let's just move it to over here so it's out of the picture and it doesn't bother us. And let's just rotate it to just about right there. Just so it barely touches the glass over there. And now with F12, you can see that's what we get. And that's much more to my liking. Now, what I don't quite like is the fact that... Oh, no, it's okay. It's okay. Cool. Um... So let's also just um, set this to 100% for now, from now on. We can then still reduce it to get test renders, but it's better to see how noisy it actually is. And you can see, now it appears less noisy and just overall much better. Okay, so that's the first light. Now you can notice one thing already, and that's what, 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 what the Blender internal is kind of prone to. Um, you have those very ugly black shadows. And no matter where we are in this world, you would never get such black shadows unless there's no light at all, okay? Otherwise, there's always some bounce lighting going on. And usually what you do to fake that, you could just under, um, under world, you could check um, environment lighting, okay? Which kind of casts light from every direction. But there are two reasons why we do not do that. First of all, um, it can give you problems with transparent materials. That's what I've experienced before, although th those problems are solvable. And the second thing is it takes way more time to render than if we just add in additional lamps, okay? So the next thing to do is now is to add in fill lamps. And you can basically use whatever lamp you want there, depending on what you want to fill in. But in our case, let's once again go with a sun lamp. So let's just duplicate that sun lamp and let's move it to over here just to make it more... As I, uh, I, I said once again, it doesn't matter where you position your sun lamp. Just the rotation is important, but um, for for the sake of organization, let's just move it over here. And now let's rotate the first one to over there, to pretty much nearly a 90 degree angle, or 180 degree angle to this lamp, okay? So it's just the other way around, because this way it can actually um, fill in for the shadows. But well, let's just do that. And the changes to make on this lamp are... First of all, we don't want it to be this strong, okay? And the reason for that is that um, this is just a fill lamp which kind of emulates like sky lighting or just bounce lighting. So a 0.3 is perfect, okay? And um, the other thing is we want it to be slightly bluish, okay? Or at least, at least I like it, slightly bluish. So let's just change that to a slight blue, something like maybe there. Okay, it doesn't really matter too much. Just a slight touch, and then one other thing, no shadows, because um, otherwise it just looks as if we have additional light sources, okay? Because we do have an additional light source here, but we don't want it to appear as one. It's just a fill light, therefore no shadows. And other than that, I think it's pretty much okay. And of course, no sky and atmosphere, because yeah, we just need to uncheck sky, because... Um, we already set the sky up with this other lamp, okay? So once again to top view, and now if we render this, you can see it looks much better. Um, those dark areas are now much brighter, but you can see we still have the issue over here, okay? And over here, and especially, and that's the most important part, we have the issue over here on those um, toothpicks. And they look really weird if they have like this, this dark um, area here. So we need to add an additional um, fill light, okay? And let's just duplicate this, rotate, and now let's just rotate it to just about, um, just about there, I guess. 
something like this is okay. Cool. And now, if we hit F12, you can see that problem is solved as well. And you don't need to bother too much with this area over here, um, because this is transparent, this is transparent, and yeah, overall it will look just fine, trust me, But and if it doesn't, we can still adjust it later on. But this is basically our lighting rig. Let me just compare it to the one I set up previously, just so it's approximately the same. Yeah, that's not that's not bad at all. Okay. So yeah, that's it for the lighting part. Um thank you for watching. If you have any kind of questions or comments or suggestions or whatever, um post them in the comments as always. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Um thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial.